Big Ed here. Today I'm bringing you the Remington Versamax. This is a 12 gauge auto loading shotgun. Since this is an auto loading shotgun, there's different ways these things work. This one happens to be gas operated and more specifically, it happens to be driven by two pistons and I'll disassemble it and we'll go over that later. So let's just go over the quick functions of this shotgun and simply how you use it and how you load it and unload it and make sure it's safe. So first thing we'll do is we'll just read about it. It's a 12 gauge. It'll take two and three quarter, three inch or three and a half inch shells. So this thing is supposedly supposed to cycle all sorts of shells through it and all at all different power levels from light target loads to full power, you know, three inch and three and a half inch mags. So this gun is stock from the factory. The only thing that's been added to it is this paracord um, sling, which I highly recommend. And the gun with the magazine nut on here, you know, had a little sling, sling swivel on here on the end of the butt. It also came with a, you know, sling attachment right there. So it's quite simple. And these things are just the push button ones that will release off the shotgun. So to make sure the shotgun is safe, you're basically just gonna rock the bolt back and it locks back and then you can take a look in there and you can verify that the chamber is empty. And also you can see the big orange plug down here from the magazine and you can see that that is also empty. So this shotgun right here, obviously that's the barrel and underneath the barrel, that's gonna be the mag. So also this shotgun has removable choke tubes in there. So you just take your little easy Remington wrench and you can just put it on the end of the barrel and go ahead and twist and remove your choke. So that's really helpful that this shotgun comes with that. So you can get anywhere from like an open, full open choke to a full choke, you know, to a super full choke for turkey hunting or goose hunting. And that's really helpful. And it's definitely a very cost effective way to go ahead and utilize a shotgun for all of its functions. And the good thing about this choke pattern on this, um, barrel of this Versamax is that these choke tubes are all interchangeable with other Remington shotguns. See, oh, we're not going to shoot a seagull today, but they are, there's a lot of them out there. So I have a Remington 870, as you folks know, I have two of them, but one of them's a newer one that has removable choke tubes. And I know my brother and I are always swapping choke tubes, depending on what we're hunting or what we're shooting. You know, he's going to my garage, I'm going through his toolbox and swapping each other's choke tubes. And that's very nice because Remington choke tubes, you can get them on average for 20 bucks. So that's really, you know, a nice feature of this shotgun. So your safety is a pretty typical location here. It's right behind the trigger and it has a big R on it. And if you push the R in, that means the safety is off. And then you will see on this side, the red showing. So red, you're dead. And then you go ahead and you push that and you're back on safe. That is your bolt release right there. So when you go ahead and fire this shotgun, basically what you'll do is you'll load your magazine up and you'll go ahead, you'll rack the bolt back, it'll chamber around. And then you go ahead and you fire it. What happens is your gas system will pressurize. It's gonna push your two pistons back, send your bolt flying back, which will extract the spent cartridge. It's going to go ahead and eject it. A new one will pop out of the magazine tube, pop up, and then the bolt will come back and feed it into your barrel and you'll be ready to go again. And it's pretty good. And supposedly the reliability of these shotguns is excellent. These shotguns were first released by Remington in 2010. And in 2011, this got shotgun of the year in American Rifleman Magazine, which is the oldest publication of a firearms magazine in the United States. So that's pretty good. This is a target load and this is a very light target load. And this is also steel shot since I'm shooting over saltwater I have to shoot steel shot and it's a number six shot two and three quarter inch shell with one ounce uh, payload in it so we'll go ahead and we'll load them up see how many it takes and we're just interested in seeing how reliably this thing cycles so there's three so right now we have one plus three down below so we'll go ahead and we'll rock these out and just uh, hopefully this is nice, reliable, and we'll get all four of them out. And we will shoot away from the seagulls. Let that one go by. Yeah, they're just not that smart, are they? So you can see we shot all four of them reliably and our bolt locked back, so that's what we're looking for. 
So as far as the Versamax goes, Remington makes lots of editions of this. This is, this is a hunting gun, and I would call this probably really a waterfowl gun because this has got plastic furniture on there. This is going to be a more affordable version of the Versamax. My brother bought this about five years ago, probably paid about $850, $900 for it, but it's just got inexpensive plastic furniture on there. There's nothing wrong, but it makes it good for a good duck gun or anything where it's going to get in some sort of a salt watery environment on there so you don't have to wreck you know a nice walnut or, or a nicer looking stock you know this will work well for that and you know if you're in a duck boat you can also use this as a paddle just kidding another thing i'll like to note too is this receiver right there is drilled and tapped and it's got plugs in there right now for a scope base so you can put a scope base on this and that'll be one of the functions on this. The barrels for this, because the piston system is integrated into the barrel, the replacement barrels for these shotguns are not inexpensive. They're around $300, give or take a little bit, depending on what barrel configuration you want. And this is just your standard vent rib, and it's just got a simple white bead in the front. And then right down the middle of the rib, it's just got a stainless steel bead, but pretty simple. But you can get these, you know, with larger magazines, magazines, extensions, 20 inch barrels, 18 inch barrels, so on and so forth. You know, I believe they even make one with that bird's head grip on there. Um, that's you know seems pretty popular these days for truck guns but you can get these in any different configuration but you can also just get extra barrels for you know one like this and have it you know become like a hog gun a deer gun uh, you know moose gun and then you can also put a long barrel on it have it be a bird gun or a good duck gun or a goose gun or a turkey gun so i've got a little bit of a closer up view of here of the shotgun and we'll go ahead and take a look at it and just see how it works. So right now the bolt's in the lock back position. So you could go ahead, got to put the bolt forward to load it. To load it, you're just going to basically take your, your, your shells and just go ahead. And you can see your orange follower right there. Just push them up against there. And this gun loads pretty easily. There is your safety right there with the big R. That means it's off safe. You can see on the bottom right there, there's your little red for red, you're dead. Your bolt release to slam the bolt home and that's basically about it and there's your trigger so to load it the bolt's got to be in the forward you know lock position in the barrel you're going to take your shells and you'll take them and you're going to load them right up there and you can see that orange follower in there and that's what you're going to push your shells into then when you go to want to load the shotgun pull your bolt back and let it go and to get the bolt to lock back, you hit that little lever right there, it releases a mechanism in the gun, and then you can get your bolt to lock back like that, which is a nice function to have on the shotgun. And that little button right there is going to be your bolt release. And there is your safety right there. There's your R for Remington. Push that, safety is off, and you can see on the bottom, the red. So that means that your shotgun, red, you're dead. It is ready to fire. And while we have the gun this close, let's go ahead and field strip it and show you guys the recoil mechanism of it. So basically there's our magazine nut right there. You take that off, take off our plastic foregrip right there. And there we have our barrel assembly. So this is one thing I really like about this shotgun is how simple this thing is. And that's really important with firearms. With most things in general, simplicity something beautiful so the way this shotgun works is there's different holes in the barrel depending on how long the shell is the shorter the shell the less power it's going to have behind it and pressure so the more of the holes will be exposed and the longer the shell the less holes will be exposed and the more pressure and the higher the pressure will be so that's kind of how this works so basically you fire the shotgun the depending on how many holes are exposed builds pressure and puts pressure into your two pistons right there and your pistons basically i'm going to say that's a five eighths of an inch of travel right there per piston and that's it right there and the cool thing about these pistons is there's a little slop in these things there's no gaskets in these things they, they really there's allen heads up here you can take the pistons out and that's where the gas vents out of there at each side and myself looking at this system it's it's brainless basically there's only three pieces to this barrel you have the barrel itself and then you have each piston 
and there's that's going to be it and there's no gaskets there's no other funny business or rings or o-rings or seals or anything like that that's it it's it's super simple which is very cool and for a hunting shotgun or any sort of a shotgun or firearm in general that's going to be you know simplicity is beautiful and that's one thing when i first started playing with this versa max that i really liked with it all right so let's go ahead for another vantage point so we got our bolt all the way forward go ahead and load one Load two, three, go ahead and lock the bolt back. We got one in the pipe, safety's on. Go ahead and we'll load our thirds. Now we'll go ahead and we'll just unload them again, just looking for functionality here. Gun is off safe. Pretty soft shooting actually with those, um, those just target loads. We'll try something heavier now, but let's go step up to the three inch mags. So I've got some big boys out. So these are Rio's uh, Blue Steel. This is These are BBs. This is really a goose load. Let's see, one and a quarter ounce shot. And you can see the difference of these two right there. So in shotgun terms, we call this high brass, and you can see how high that brass is, and it's also a three inch shell compared to, that's aluminum, that's not even brass for that cheap target load. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna rock out some of these and see how they fire. First, we'll see how many the, the shotgun will take. Put them, slam the bolt home. One, two, three and then we'll go ahead so we got one in the pipe right now the safety is on we'll top off the mag so we have three plus one in here right now so we'll go ahead and we'll rip these and see what these recalls i'm sure it's going to kick harder too so that uh, shot all four of them perfect as you can see Remington does claim that this has the recoil of a 20 gauge. I don't know if I believe that, um, but it's not bad. Um, definitely kind of a mechanical feeling to the shotgun when it cycles. So let's try one more test on this thing. So right now I have two three inch and two target loads. We'll load up a target load and another big boy, so it's gonna alternate. So we'll see how, the, how these fire. All right, here we go here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can see that works just fine. Um, I could definitely feel the difference of the gun the pulsating with the recoil. Uh, that's the first time I've ever had that work correctly in a semi-automatic shotgun. Uh, that's definitely pretty cool, um, but just, you know, it's doing a good job of being reliable and uh, spitting out everything we throw into it. So I've got two non-toxic slugs here, uh, the expensive uh, tungsten ones. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and shoot a cheap target round in there, get the gun to cycle, and then I'll have two slugs behind that, and we'll see how that goes. So we'll go ahead, rack our round in there, make sure our safety's on. Two slugs right here. All right. So you can see that worked quite well and the bolt still locked back, which is really good and what we're looking for. All right, let's just do one last quick test here. We just got some regular tar target loads up here just for uh, just a little more camera work. I like the angle on this shot. As you can see, it's fast, you know. It's gonna be, you could probably outrun the trigger on this gun and the action on it. Yeah, as you can see, this thing's pretty reliable. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna apologize. I don't have any three and a, three and a half inch shells. Um, I feel bad that I could not cycle those through this shotgun. I don't have any, and pretty much this is April 10th that I'm filming this, 2021. 
Biden just signed us some executive gun orders. We're, you know, we're on the back half of COVID, you know, all the ammunition problems we have. A lot of stores don't have any ammunition. So I didn't even attempt to drive around and look for three and a half inch shells because the nearest gun store to me that sells shells is at least 45 minutes to an hour away. So I didn't bother because I figured I'd probably strike out anyway. So I apologize for not having three and a half inch shells, but I'm going to assume that they'll probably run through this just fine for the reputation of this shotgun, you know, because as you can see, we had everything from two. And the other thing I didn't get on film actually, I had a couple two and three quarter inch full power hunting loads and those cycled through here fine too. So you're, the way the gas is mitigated in the barrel with your little holes with the, your recoil with your piston, gas driven pistons in there, just seems to work excellently on this firearm. And <clears throat> if you closely inspect this firearm, you can see that literally on the bottom of the bolt, there's two extra, you know, pieces of metal that come down where the pistons just sit on it. So this is a, this is a good shotgun. Might not be the prettiest shotgun, but I would say this is an excellent utilitarian shotgun. Also, it's not the cheapest shotgun either. But basically, when my brother and I retired our father's shotguns, he wanted one shotgun that would do it all. You know, and he was willing to spend some money on it. Me, I wanted an over-under for all the target shooting I do. And then I got an 870 pump that I could kind of do bird hunting and, you know, some deer hunting or slug hunting or buckshot hunting with too. But this is kind of a one-stop, you know, shotgun that'll, that'll work for a lot of different purposes. The only thing that these semi-autos aren't the greatest for, you know, you're not going to have as much, you know, up in the air. They're not as natural as a over-under shotgun, but they're not bad and you get used to them and they work just fine. They'll get the job done. But folks, if you're looking for any sort of a 12 gauge or a 20 gauge shotgun, you know, in a semi-automatic configuration for pretty much any purpose, you know, I've got to rec recommend this. Um, it's not cheap, but this is something, if you take care of it, and the finish on this, and this gun has been duck hunting a few times, there's no rust on it. If you take care of it and clean it and treat it well and show it some love, not even much love. Shotguns, this is easy to clean. That's the other nice thing about this shotgun. Since gas only stays in the barrel and it gets vented out those two pistons, no gas enters the receiver. So your receiver theoretically should never need to be cleaned. Theoretically, there should literally just put some, make sure it's got some lube in there, but theoretically no gas makes its way back there. Should, should be all right. But yeah, I highly recommend this shotgun. It works well. It cycled everything I put into it and all the mishmashes we did with it. And sorry, I didn't have more ammo, but that's about it. And also if you get different barrels, you know, this gun will serve a lot of different purposes. But folks, thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. It helps me out. Also give my video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll get back to them as quick as I can. Thanks for watching, folks.